So a while ago I've uploaded a video on how to create an epic interface using my love for Star Wars movies as an example. And many of you DM'd me asking how I created that navigation bar in the app. So I thought today will be a great opportunity to show you exactly that. Okay, so what you're seeing on my screen is Figma. This is my UI software of choice, but if you don't want to use Figma and you like to use Adobe XD, you can still follow along and do most of the same steps. For the Star Wars app navigation bar, I've created these four button icons. The first one is watching content, second one is characters and so on and so on. It doesn't really matter, you're probably gonna use your own icons. Uh, but what's important it is that I've made each one of these icons as a component. And I gave them two variants, one is off and one is on or enabled and disabled if uh, you will. If you like to see how I created this on off toggle in Figma, please check out my latest video. I will link it up here or down below. After we created our icons, we can go ahead and start creating our navigation bar. So I'm gonna click R on my keyboard and create the background for my nav bar. Let's make it 88 height in pixels. Let's give it the same color as our background and I'm gonna give it an inner, inner shadow uh, to create some kind of a separating line between the bottom navigation menu and the rest of the app. That looks good. And now I'm gonna drag in a, a variant uh, from our icons that we've created. Just like that, let's align them together. I'm gonna select all four of them and I'm gonna click on tidy up. That will align them nicely together. Uh, just like that, let's make the spacing equal. Let's make it 44 by the, for the spacing, that's fine for now. Now I'm gonna click R again on my keyboard and I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Let's round the corners to around 12. And let's rename it and call it Icons Background. Let's put it in the back. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it under my first icon, the watch icon. I think that might be too big. Let's put it around four pixels from each side. Okay, now I'm gonna move the other icons aside a little bit. I'm gonna click Control G on my keyboard and that will show me the layout grid guides. So let's align this rectangle next to the guides. Now let's change the color of it. I'm gonna give it the same color as the background and I'm gonna uh, give it two drop shadows. So one will be in uh, black and the other ones I'm gonna change to some kind of a white color. Let's make it minus eight, minus eight, 24 on the blur and white color, let's make it 8%, okay? So that's very, very, very subtle um, for the button, so we can, it will pop up a little bit from, uh, from the menu, but not too much. Okay, so I'm gonna add a stroke to my rectangle and let's make it a linear color um, from black to black. I think this looks good. Okay, let's change a bit the, the drop shadow. Let's increase it. Uh, let's increase the blur a little bit. And let's increase the opacity. I think, let's see, something like, yeah, something like 40%. Okay, so now I'm gonna click T on my keyboard and I'm gonna bring in a text. I'm gonna click, uh, write watch because this is the watch icon and I'm gonna align everything, the icon, the text and the rectangle um, all together. So this is what we get. Now I'm gonna align everything to uh, my uh, layout grid and I'm gonna take the, the text, the icon and the rectangle and I'm gonna click on um, Command uh, G to put them inside the group. The reason I'm doing this is just for the alignment, uh, just for the alignment purposes. But I'm gonna ungroup it in a second. Okay, so I'm going to select the Watch button again, and I'm gonna ungroup it by clicking on Shift Command G. And I'm gonna select each icon, and I'm gonna toggle it to the disabled state or disabled variant. So you see, it's very, very convenient. And I'm gonna select all our menu, all about our navigation bar, and I'm gonna click on Option Command 
K to create a component out of it. And let's take that component and drag it outside of our main app frame for now. And we're gonna give it a name, let's call it nav menu. And we're gonna add a variant to it. And just for the purposes of uh, staying organized, let's give uh, each variant a name. This one will be characters and vehicles. Okay, so we have four variants. And now we're gonna change the look of them, of each one of them on how it should look like. So we're gonna take our rectangle and move it to the next icon, which is the droids icon. So the reason I'm deleting the text from the previous variant and adding a new text to the new variant is because you have to remember that Figma remembers uh, the names for smart animate. So we can't use the same names for each variant for uh, the text fields. So I'm gonna uh, bring in a new text and I'm gonna click, a, gonna name it Droids. Let's align them perfectly together. I'm gonna group them again by selecting the text, the icon and the rectangle and clicking on Command G. And I'm gonna to align all the icons together. You have to keep the edges icons at the same spacing from your background menu all the time. That looks good. And let's toggle the watch icon to uh, disabled and the droids icon to enabled. And now I'm gonna create the other two variants for the characters and for the vehicles. Great, so you see we have four variants of that menu. One is watch, one is droids, one is characters, and one is vehicles. And the next step is to prototype it. So I'm gonna go to my prototype tab and I'm gonna select the droid icon and drag an arrow to the droid menu. And I'm going to select on click, change to, make sure it's the droids. And for the animation, I'm gonna choose smart animate. And for the ease in, I'm gonna choose ease in and back. That creates a very nice bouncy animation between uh, all of them. And let's do the rest. So I'm gonna uh, select my characters icon and drag it to the characters nav bar. And what I really like about Figma that it keeps the same properties uh, that I just did for the previous icon. So I don't have to really change anything. And let's take the vehicles icon and drag it to the vehicles nav bar. Let's do it for the rest of the variants. We're gonna drag each icon to its proper navigation state. Okay, cool. So let's take the first variant and drag it to our uh, application frame. So that's an instant of the component that we've created of our nav bar. Let's align it perfectly in the app. And let's preview this by clicking on the play button. And check this out. Once we move between the icons, we have this really, really cool animation that goes in between each tab that we're clicking on. Okay, my fellow designers, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Share your thoughts in the comments, smash that like button if you like to see more videos like this. Follow my work on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and um, may the force be with you, my friend.